opposite way. However, in tight situations like this one, usually I like to pick going bottom below them as they'll like to tend to go upwards and I can swim underneath of them to get past. Now, we're being chased by the gear while also having to swim underwater, so it gets even tougher at this part. Try to do your best to avoid the spikes on the ceilings and floors while you're swimming through this whole area, and also doing so very quickly so the gear doesn't hit you. After a little bit underwater, you'll be back on land for just a little bit. Be sure during this section of water that you're able to jump a little bit try to speed things up. Once back underwater, swim along the path, and then float over these spikes without going too high or too low so the gear overpasses you so that you can get to the next area. These rubber duck enemies are extremely dangerous, as when they hit you, they'll immediately be able to attack again and do damage. So wait for them to turn around and start going the opposite direction so you can sneak up behind them and deliver your hits to them. After that last water area, we have one more section where we have to float down, avoiding the spikes before we reach the bottom and complete the level. Up next is level 10, the Rat Race. Now, Rat Race starts off pretty similar to that elevator-type level that we had to do earlier. You start off on these normal plank-type platforms as you start to work your way down this time instead of up. Be sure to be very careful of the enemies as well as move very fast to avoid the gas. However, after just a little bit, a rat will spawn and start chasing you around. If the rat reaches the bottom and hits the bomb before you can defuse it, you'll end up losing a life and have to start back at the top. The key to these sections, getting through them fast, is being able to move through multiple floors at one time by moving left or right. When you reach the bottom, be sure to attack the bomb so that you destroy it, and you complete that section. You'll then have another area where you're moving through normal planks, watching out for different perils, before the rat will spawn again and you'll have to race them again. Once again, falling through multiple floors in one fall is going to be key in order to actually get past him and able to get to the end. This takes exact, precise movement so that you can fall through the floors multiple times in a row, so that you can reach the bottom. Sometimes just the slightest clip of landing on one of those platforms is just enough for him to be able to get past you and able to hit the bomb before you do. This level alone has cost me so many lives during practices and plays of this game over the years. It's going to take you a lot of practice just to be able to get past maybe the first or second ones of these races, let alone actually being able to get through all of it. But you can see that when you're able to go through multiple platforms at once without landing on a single one of them, this gives you a great advantage and gives you plenty of extra time to work with when you get to the longer platforms that you actually have to run across. Thankfully, though, this is the final one of the races during the course of this level. Be very careful at the end so you don't get electrocuted, then hit the bomb, and wait for the rat to fall down, because now it's time for the boss battle. This boss is pretty simple to deal with, and the first little bit of it is just going to be you running back and forth charging at him to deliver a hit. Do this for a while until he finally starts actually moving around the screen. If you're lucky, you'll be able to do a ton of damage during this portion.
The problem is, when you get longer into the battle, though, it's going to be a lot harder to start doing it because he flies a lot higher up in the screen, and this will give him a chance to actually land and start doing some stuff to you. Just be sure every time you deliver a hit, get away from him very quickly so that his bull charge doesn't end up running into you. Unfortunately, just like the previous boss, if he's able to get a hit into you, you're going to be laying on the ground for too long and you won't have enough time to actually be able to stand back up and get away from him before he's able to attack you again, and you'll most likely lose a life. Once you deliver the final hit, he gets knocked off screen and we move on to the next level. Level 11 is Klinger Winger. Now, this level is a strange name, however, what it is is you're riding this unicycle-esque machine and being out of the way of a giant portal enemy. What you have to do is press the direction that you're moving on the different platforms. So, if the arrows are pointing left, you hit left. Right, right, up, up, and down, down. However, if you press the wrong direction, you slow up massively, giving the portal behind you a good amount of chance to catch up to you. You also have to beat the level in one go, there are no checkpoints located throughout the stage. So if you lose a life, you start off at the very beginning of it. If you're able to get the timing down of being able to press the direction at the exact right moment when you need to, this level can get a little bit easy. However, your first few times through, you just mess up slightly, just a little bit, for only a half a second or so, that's enough for the portal usually to catch up with you and take you out. Once you reach the end of the stage, you jump off your vehicle, and now you actually have to battle this vortex. When it gets close to you, do a ram move and knock it back, and if you're lucky, you'll be able to hit it a few times with your ram before it's able to escape from you. When it goes up into the air, be sure to be away from it when it lands so that you can end up getting another ramming attack in on it, or a fist move. Most of it's just waiting for it to come down from the sky so that you're actually able to land in a hit. And as it gets farther and farther into the battle, he gets faster in his movement, so it's a little bit harder to actually do damage to it. If you're able to kind of get stuck in any kind of loop, take that to your advantage to finally take him out. Once he's done, we move on to the final stage of the game. 